Welcome to another edition of Inside the Huddle here on TXA 21 here at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. I'm Bill Jones along with Tashard Choice of the first place Dallas Cowboys. Has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? That's right. Real good ring. I'm glad we was able to do that. Of course, a victory over the Philadelphia Eagles. Put the Cowboys in first place all alone. They're leading the NFC East. I got a question for you as we kick off the show this week, Tashard. What is the definition of Victory Monday? Oh, off day, another off day. You know, most of the time we go six days a week. So, you know, Coach Wade always give us off day when we win. So we got today also. It's pretty cool. All right. So I'm thinking back now. Kansas yeah. City, yeah. Atlanta, yeah. Seattle, Philadelphia. Yeah. Right. You've had four straight Victory Mondays then, yeah. right? A lot of rest, a lot of rest, baby. Okay. So <laughs> how, do you, how do you typically spend a Victory Monday? Uh, most of the time, just relaxing. You know, you go and watch film, you do all the things, you know, may work out today, but you don't have to do anything with, you know, that's organized with the team. So you just try to take it easy and get ready for, you know, Wednesday when we have to report. And the best way to cap off a Victory Monday is inside the huddle right. here at the House of Blues, right? Yes, sir. All right, let's go inside the huddle here on TXA 21. And now we are inside the huddle here at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. And to Shard, what's it like winning four games in a row in this town? Oh, it's great. You know, first thing I think more importantly is uh, our football team. I think we're we're riding really, you know, high on confidence. You know, everybody's feeling really good about how we plan as a team collectively. And so it's really cool to see, you know, everybody come together after that Kansas City game, which I mentioned to you, you know, when we was on the show. But it's really cool, man, to win and, you know, have all our fans really excited about our, you know, our football team. Now, is it a noticeable difference walking down the street? I mean, you're smi you smile all the time, but you're really smiling when you've won four in a row and you lead the division. Yeah, you know, I, I keep my <laughs> chest poked out when I wake up in the morning or more. You know, I'm excited about about life a little more because when you lose I'm, I'm a sore loser so when we lose a football game man it, I'm, I'm not a cool person to be around but you know lately I've been you know waking up with a big old smile on my face just looking outside and just you know pumping my chest a little bit <laughs> kind of the same look you get on the sideline when you hear you're going into the game to run the Razorback offense right yeah you know coach give me an opportunity man to get the the football in my hands and so it's been pretty cool to actually you know get the ball at the quarterback position I have a lot of guys blocking up front like Leonard like you see in the last game and all those guys up front they do a heck of a job so whenever I get the opportunity to run the football man it's cool okay our guest tonight is a guy who had an interception early in the game against Philadelphia Ooh. Gerald Sensabaugh who He's is making balling. himself yeah let's hear it for Gerald Sensabaugh yeah. and Gerald will join us here in, in just a moment here on the yeah. show but He's made a pretty big impact in this secondary. Jerry been balling. That's my guy. <laughs> you know, it, it is funny because me, me and his locker are next to each other, and so we kid around, man. We joke around, and he talk. We talk about all type of things, but, you know, he always tell me the difference between being, you know, a Dallas Cowboy and then being a Jaguar. So, you know, he always told me, you know, the difference, you know, the difference in the, between okay. the two. Now, this was the second time you played a game in Philadelphia. Right. What's the difference walking off the field in Philadelphia as a victor, as opposed to what happened last year, you know, as far as the fans are concerned. Yeah, and they sing that song. They got an eagle song. I don't know if y'all heard it before, but it sucks. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, you know, going, going in this year, man, you know, I said some, you know, the, the crowd is really funny. And, you know, they got a lot of words to say, especially to. They didn't throw you know, any batteries at you. They didn't throw any batteries because at you. Because there's no they, snow this time. See, yeah. you know, what they used to do, they used to, to, to pack snowballs, <laughs> put batteries in them. Yeah, so, they, you know, they said a lot of things. But after the game, I was looking at them. I was like, why are y'all still here? You need to go home. It's time to go home now. You know, so the whole time, you know, it was really exciting, to, you know, how we won the game. And we didn't caught the bit pass on third down, man, to get us, you know, to run the clock out. So it was really cool. Okay, I got to talk to you about the, a personal thing uh -huh. right now. Cool. Earth Motor Cars is yeah. one of the sponsors of your show. Mm -hmm. You got your new Earth Motor Car now, right? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Lux Audio as well? Yeah. Are you? Are you... Really ready to go now? I mean, yeah. you're all set? I'm ready to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm locked and loaded. I'm jacked up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I'm good to go. <laughs> what do you like best about your car? Uh, 
Well, if y'all don't know, I got a new car. It's a uh, 1996 Ford Ranger. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, no. that's my car. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. That was my first car. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I got, a, I got a Range Rover. I bought a Range Rover from them, and uh, they, Earth Motor Cars did a good deal for me on the Range Rover. Then I got, you know, I like speakers. I like loud music, you know, so it's cool. I got two 12s in my car, so it's really loud, so I'm all the way good. Okay, and so what kind of music do you listen to when you listen to that loud music? Uh, a lot of country and western? A lot of country. <laughs> <laughs> George Strait. George Strait. Uh, <laughs> Garth Brooks. Who else? They got, you know, Coldplay. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I got a man. I listen to a lot of rap. You know, I like hip hop, R&B, gospel music. I listen to a lot of different things, though. All right, we're going to be joined by Gerald Sensabaugh in just a moment. The stories he will tell. Ooh, funny. All right, Tashard's going to interview Gerald Sensabaugh when we come back here on Inside the Huddle from the House of Blues in downtown Dallas. Yeah. Closed captioning for Inside the Huddle provided by Grand Marnier and limousine transportation provided by A-Vision Limousine Service. Limousines for all occasions. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Home Marketing Services, HMS, helping the homeless one renter at a time, and Toyota of Irving. Welcome back to Inside the Huddle here on TXA 21 at the House of Blues here in downtown Dallas. I'm Bill Jones, as usual, joined by Tashard Choice, and we have a very special guest this week, yeah. Gerald Sensabaugh, who had an interception against the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Miss Price is in the house, too. You can tell again this week. Believe it. Gerald Sensabaugh in his first year with the Dallas Cowboys, former Jacksonville Jaguar. He was a fifth-round draft pick of the Jags back in 2005 out of the University of North Carolina. Spent his last year college at North Carolina. Prior to that, East Tennessee State. He is the Ooh. pride of, let me get this hometown right, <laughs> Kingsport, <laughs> Tennessee. Yeah. yeah. Gerald, yeah. welcome to Inside the Huddle. I'm glad to be here. I, yeah. I know you're glad to be here because <laughs> it's to shard show. That's my guy. <laughs> and, and you just got to tell some stories about to shard choice. We're going to turn the tables on to shard, baby. Oh, oh, before you do that. All right. What? Your college was what? East Tennessee, right? East Tennessee State University. T so, you know, most of the time in college, right, you know, college teams, you know, we travel them, you know, planes, different yeah. things like that. So, gee. And, of course, and of course, Tashard went to Georgia Tech. <laughs> hey, Big time college football, ranked the top ten in the country, right? We're number seven right now, baby. Okay, number seven in the country. <laughs> least, yeah, yeah. All right, take it away, Tashard. So, gee, tell them how y'all used to travel the game, how long it may take y'all to travel to a team to go play. Well, uh, playing double A ball, your first game was usually against a 1A team. So, um, East Tennessee State, we played Pittsburgh one year. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they have us riding a bus all the way to Pittsburgh? It's <laughs> how long was you? How long how far was, was it? How long was the ride? Man, it had to be like 16, 18 hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we get off the bus. We all sore. Don't nobody want to play. <laughs> and it was worth it because you just kicked their butt, didn't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> G, G is hilarious. G said he just go out there and play for himself. <laughs> and my guy. And, oh, well, here's the deal. East Tennessee State, you right. were there the first three years. And then why in the world did you transfer to North Carolina? Uh, they actually cut the football program. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it was You know, some funding. football programs cut players. <laughs> at East Tennessee State, they just cut the whole team. They cut the whole program. <laughs> yeah, due to funding, uh, they had to actually cut the football program out. So it became yeah. like high school all over again because you have all these colleges coming in. You had to go through the whole recruiting process all right. over again. Right. But, um, but it here. worked out good. I got to go to North Carolina and got drafted, and uh, I'm here yeah. now. So. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we get into these stories, let's talk first off about your interception against Philadelphia. Because the day before, I got a, an email saying that Gerald Sensabaugh is going to be Tashard's um, guest on this show. Yep. And I said, okay, I'm rooting for Gerald Sensabaugh <laughs> big time in this game. Yep. And it was like the, near, one of the first plays of the game, Gerald Sensabaugh with an interception. I said, yes. <laughs> what happened? Man, uh, mm -hmm. I guess uh, one of the receivers dropped the ball and it came to me. I was just happy to catch it. <laughs> with that club on my hand, I didn't drop two of them already. So. <laughs> you know, you got kind, kind of the story of his life, you yeah. know. East Tennessee State I dropped just, the program <laughs> and he... Yep. 
wound up in the NFL. <laughs> this receiver dropped the ball and wound up in the interception. Yeah, yeah I'm glad to get interception right there. Like, uh, I was kind of disappointed because I had dropped like two early on this season. Uh, everybody knows I'm playing with this big cast on, so I can yeah. only use my fingers a little bit, no thumbs. So yeah. it's pretty hard catching the ball, but uh, I was glad to be able to get that interception and offense went and scored a touchdown, put us up some points, and uh, that's a, uh, we played the rest of the game pretty yeah. good well and uh, got a victory. Yeah, but of course, you weren't here for that debacle in December, but going into Philadelphia is pretty and winning is pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, I see. Uh, that, that's a hostile environment down Ooh. there. I mean, uh, it's playing in Jacksonville, you don't really have too many rivalries like this. So. <laughs> 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 I mean, don't, nobody really cares. But, <laughs> Gee, but, uh, that's like that's like a that's pretty much like playoff atmosphere, uh, Super yeah. Bowl type game, man. Uh, yeah. It was very big. The crowd's all into it. I mean, it, it was so it was so fun to play that game and uh, great to come out with a victory against a rivalry. Don't they know everybody's name though? Did that kid you how they knew everything about you? Like yeah. me, they knew. They was like, Choice, you a third string back. You suck." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> and the, the funniest thing though. Coach Pete, my running back coach, he's a, uh, his brother, Rodney Pete. Rodney Pete, played for Philly. So we over there warming up, me, Mary, and Felix, and Dion, we warming up. And the fans come over there, it was like, Pete, you tell your brother he absolutely sucked while he was here. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> These fans are no joke. Wow. No joke. They don't play at all, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool, though. All right. Uh, when we continue here on Inside the Huddle, we're going to talk about just what a great athlete Gerald Sensabaugh is. Ooh. I mean, this guy, you, he could <laughs> jump out of this restaurant right now. <laughs> we're going to talk about that when Inside the Huddle continues in a moment on TXA 21. <laughs> This segment of Inside the Huddle was brought to you by Carter Eye Center, the official LASIK surgery center of the Dallas Cowboys, and Earth Motor Cars, world-class pre-owned vehicles at down-to-earth prices. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Apple Vacations, America's favorite vacation company, and Occidental Hotels and Resorts, raising the bar for all-inclusive vacations. Inside the Huddle continues now here on TXA 21. I want to tell you about A-Vision Limousine Service. It provides luxury limousine service throughout the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex with a limo for every occasion. Whatever the event, you'll be proud to arrive in an elegant vehicle chauffeured by A-Vision Limousine Service. That's avisionlimousineservice.com. Bill Jones to Shard Choice. Gerald Sensabaugh, he would have loved to have had A-Vision limousine service back at East Tennessee State. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and, uh, and uses it proudly now, I'm sure. But, Gerald, let's talk. When you first entered the league, okay, you had the one year at North Carolina. Of course, everybody goes, all the top draft prospects anyway, mm -hmm. yep. go to the NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis leading into a couple of months before the draft. Tashard, you went there. Yep. You remember what your vertical was? Oh, I was in the top five. I was maybe like a 36. 36 vertical? <laughs> Pro day I did like a 37 and a half, 38. And that's pretty good. Yeah. I, that, that's a good I got a little rise now. Call me a little Michael <laughs> Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald Sensabaugh's vertical jump back in, I guess, 2005, two jump, months G? before the draft. You can Google this and, you know, <laughs> you everything on the Internet is official, okay? <laughs> what was your vertical at the combine? I actually jumped uh, 46. Are and, you uh, kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> it's an actual uh, current record right now. I think it's still really? the, the combine record, 46 inches. It's the all-time record at the <laughs> NFL scouting combine. <laughs> A vertical jump of 46 inches. Ooh. That's Ooh. that's outstanding. I you mean, know, he could jump over fences when dogs chase you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I know all about it, baby. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? All right, here's the point now when to shard, you put on your interview cap, okay? Yeah. All right, you got a lot of uh, questions to ask about Jacksonville, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. Have at it. G, you know, you know, everybody, you know, they have their different jerseys. So y'all going to laugh at this. When I was talking to G, you were telling me how different Jacksonville was from the Cowboys. <laughs> so tell us your first year when uh, you saw somebody with your jersey on and uh, it, they spelled your name wrong. 
<laughs> you gotta tell him, G. He had me rolling in the locker room. About yeah, him. man. I actually went to the game, and uh, I guess you see somebody wearing your jersey out there, and my name was spelled wrong. I'm like, <laughs> how they spelled it, man? Man, I don't even know. I was, uh, <laughs> I was kind of mad at the same time. I didn't even want to look at how they spelled it. I, was, I seen it. I don't even think it had my, le my last name as ten letters, and I think it was like eight letters. So I don't know how you get sense about eight letters, but uh, that was pretty funny. What's the biggest difference between being a Jaguar and a Cowboy? The biggest difference? Like, what did you, because I remember when you first got here, you was telling how, you know, Cowboys, we got to, he said, man, everybody do something here. Somebody's a rapper. He was talking about Martellus. <laughs> he was talking, he, you know, he was just saying different things. So just tell us, you know, different things you see. Uh, first of all, the fans. Yeah. yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> That's the biggest difference. Yeah, y'all had blacked out seats, huh? Man, blacked out games. They don't even come on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out so many since he stayed again. Man. <laughs> Get our TV game. But uh, we got a lot of entertainers on the team. We probably got about eight rappers, <laughs> about four singers. Uh, Rodney was. Rodney, Rodney was, Hannah was dancing one day. <laughs> 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 Rodney, if y'all don't know Rodney Hannah, he was on our team, and he, and one day he came in, and um, I had this old Planet Rock song, where it's like a break dancing song, and he dances really well, and so he, he scored his to touchdown in the preseason. He tries to rap too. Oh me, <laughs> <laughs> oh me, <laughs> and I played the song, man, and I had the whole team laughing at Rodney dancing. It was, it was crazy. <laughs> I actually might have the video on my cell phone, actually. I kind of recorded it. Yeah, yeah. If we get some time, I can show some people that. That's pretty funny. A little different uh, being at Cowboy Stadium, huh? Oh, yeah, big difference. I mean, uh, I think that <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Jones did a great job with the, with the stadium. Uh, that's an awesome place to play at. Yeah. I mean, uh, oh, man. The big screen, I mean, it's always sold out. I yeah. mean, this is the and first time in my career I'm seeing every game sold out, so <laughs> it's kind of awesome to be out there playing in this environment, but um, I'm, I'm glad to be here. And, uh, For real. I'm glad to be here. All right, we're going to continue here on Inside the Huddle with Gerald Sensabaugh and Tashard Choice <laughs> in just a moment right here on TXA 21. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> this segment of Inside the Huddle was brought to you by Sports Connection, your number one stop for Dallas Cowboys ticket packages and sports-related travel, and Lux Audio. This segment of Inside the Huddle is brought to you by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's and all-natural Snapple. The best stuff on earth just got better. Still a few more minutes left here on Inside the Huddle here at the House of Blues in downtown Dallas right here on TXA 21. Bill Jones, Tashard Choice, Gerald Sensabaugh. And before we do anything else, we need to wish a happy birthday on this very day. Ray Salinas is the executive producer of Inside the Ray Huddle. Ray. It's not his birthday, though. Don't clap for Ray Salinas, all right? <laughs> it's more, a whole lot more important than that. Yeah. It's his father-in-law, Doug Etheridge's 60th birthday today. <laughs> I'd say that's more important. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. He, we he's also want to say we also want to say hi to Bob LaBelle. You know Bob very well. Yeah, Bob is like my brother from another yeah. mother, man. <laughs> I think me and Bob may be. I think me and Bob maybe have the same blood type, man. We, you know, his birthday you just passed. You look a lot alike. His birthday, yeah. yeah. You know, his birthday just passed. My birthday's coming up, so. Your yeah. birthday's coming up? Yeah, on the 20th of November. I'm a Scorpio, November baby. November 20th? Yeah. Trying to think how old you're going to be in November 20th. Gerald, what about um, TC when he gets to the end zone? You know, he was doing this. T C is like a T O. Yeah, what do you, yeah. How do you rate what he his touchdown celebrations? He's had three of these, those this year. How about it? He's giving him a little. Uh, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's just all my fans telling you. You know, I'm here, baby. Is it more <laughs> enjoyable doing it? Is it more in, enjoyable doing that at Cowboy Stadium or at the Link in Philadelphia? Oh, it's pretty when tough. When you know everybody but, hates you there. Yeah, it's pretty tough. And they said a lot of good words to me after I did it, too. So, <laughs> you know, it's cool. It's always better to do it in the home crowd because I was a little fired up when I scored, you know, when we played Carolina. So it's always cool to be in the front of your home fans. 
Well, I was getting that with the touchdown celebration. You got any celebration that you do or that you plan you score a touchdown? I have not. It's hard to do a G and an S, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd say I could dunk it, nothing like uh, Miles where he did the layup. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that? Did you uh, see that? actually dunk it. <laughs> and you know Not what I told him? Did I see it? But the whole world saw it. And you know, and you know what I told him? What? White man can't jump. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't like that too tough. He was laughing at me the whole time. We mess with Miles. We call him light skin. We mess with Miles about that all the time. All right. Green Bay Packers, Lambeau Field. Yeah. Have you played at Lambeau before? I, I've been there. It's a nice environment to play in. I mean, their fans are real active. Yeah. But uh, we're going to go in there with the same mindset like we did against the Eagles and get a victory. Is that right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Speaking of that 46-inch vertical, you could do the Lambeau Leap. <laughs> yeah, they like pour a beer on me and throw me back there. <laughs> First, I want to thank G. I want to thank all the fans for coming out on Inside the Huddle. Thanks again. We'll be here every Monday night. Come back and holler at us. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsors of Inside the Huddle include Home Marketing Services, HMS, helping the homeless one renter at a time, the Carter Eye Center, official LASIK surgery center of the Dallas Cowboys, Earth Motor Cars, world-class pre-owned vehicles at down-to-earth prices. Symantec, confidence in a connected world. Insight, maximizing your business advantage. A-Vision Limousine Service, limousines for all occasions. Occidental Hotels and Resorts and Apple Vacations. Sports Connection, your number one stop for Dallas Cowboys ticket packages and sports-related travel. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. All Natural Snapple, the best stuff on earth just got better. Toyota of Irving and Lux Audio. Huddle is filmed live on location Monday nights at House of Blues in Victory Park. Log on to InsideTheHuddle.com for filming dates and showtimes. Video production services provided by Gridiron Films. Tune in next week and go Inside the Huddle, a production of Sports Media Incorporated.